Here are 14 must-eat spots when you visit Singapore. Let me tell you why. Before we get to the food, I go in food adventures all over the world, so make sure you are subs so you don't miss one bite. Coming up next, Tokyo and then Kyoto. Tanga Eating House has been serving breakfast to Singaporeans since 1939, and it doesn't feel like much has changed. The menu is simple and classic. Okay, so we have our traditional breakfast here. Ooh, taste the coffee first. It looks thick and delicious. Ooh. So in the coffee too, because it's so strong, they use like condensed milk, which is good because it is a strong coffee. It's not bitter. It's very much like coffee flavor, which I love, but to mellow out just a little bit, ask for a little bit of milk too, which I think helps. But just like the little tiny sweetness running through there with the milk. So good. The kaya toast is white bread toasted with butter and kaya, which is a coconut jam. And you dip that into some soft boiled eggs. I love just how like deceptively simple it is. White bread, the kaya, just like this sort of sweet little tiny coconut notes go running through it. Soft boiled egg, I always love and just dip and eat it. This is like perfect breakfast. And if you want, you can mix some dark soy sauce into those eggs too. Mm. And that whole set was 640 Singaporean dollars, which is like a little less than five bucks USD. It's like the feeling in here. I think when you think like traditional breakfast, like this is how I want it to feel. Not fancy, not anything, cranking out food all day. Mm. Killing it. More than what's technically the best bite, it's the experience of this breakfast that I will remember and why I travel. You can replicate food in New York City, but you can't replicate this restaurant. If you are looking for more Kaya Toast, uh, there are Yakun locations all over too. I got their grilled cheese French toast Kaya Toast when I went. Dude, it's so perfect. Mm. It's sweet, it's savory. Love that fat of the cheese in the middle. Really custardy because it's a French toast. Just like a great combo of all the flavors hitting at once. New Ubin Seafood is a more modern take on the traditional seafood Norzi Cha restaurant which takes its inspiration from Singaporean home-cooked affordable dishes. Here's what I got. Foie gras egg special is a traditional Singaporean breakfast, which is a sous vide egg with a char-grilled piece of foie gras in it. All right, so the instructions were to just do it as a shot. I don't know how you're supposed to do a shot of these huge pieces of foie gras in there, but you just gotta, you gotta go for it sometimes. I mean, with the fog in there, that is delicious. Mmm, it is just like, Rich beyond belief. Mmm. This is the Indian vegetarian wade, which are crispy fritters made from lentils and other spices, and that comes with two chutneys. It's just a nice big crispy piece of deep fried deliciousness in there. All right, so they told me you're supposed to take a bite out of this. This has a coconut chutney and a tomato chutney, and then this mysterious green pepper with lots of seeds in it, so we'll see how hot it is, but this first. It is so crispy and really, really chewy in the middle. That's great. And like, ooh, hiding in there is, hiding in there is heat too. It's hitting me like right there. Mm. I wish I could say it was balanced by those chutneys. It's not, but those chutneys play really well, just like how fatty that is. But, and then you take the bite out of there, green pepper. I know what you're waiting for. I know what you're waiting for. <laughs> it's not as spicy what's in there though. Brinjal Delight are thin slices of eggplant or brinjal that are caramelized and served with dried chilies. Mmm, super crispy, really sweet. Nice sort of like vinegar flavor coming through. Maybe it's like little tiny bites of peat in there. It's really good. Also has just like a nice little sourness too. Like it is the eggplant equivalent to like sweet and sour chicken. Hokkien Mi special are yellow and white noodles stir fried in a pork and prawn broth that comes with pork belly, baby squid, and clams. It smells like the ocean. <laughs> it's maybe a touch pungent. It's very like low main noodle texture, really, really creamy. I think the aroma is more that like shrimp coming through. It's like very more delicate shrimp and seafood flavors, which is actually really, really nice. Mm. Black Angus ribeye that comes no. with potato wedges and what they call heart attack fried rice, which is fried rice fried in the beef drippings. These fries are my type of fries. They're much more potatoey, very light little crisp on there. Mmm, wow. It's fried. In the beef fat, and they take that beef to put on top these little tiny extra pieces there, but fry again. So it's like double cooked, double fried, quadruple deliciousness, I'm sure. Okay, fry. 
rich. Beef is not as like crispy as I thought it would be. It's more like a little chili on top, but the flavors are ridiculous. Sweet, rich, tamami, deep, beefy flavors. Mmm, that's marinated really, really nice. Chili crab is a must in Singapore. Monster pieces of crab are cooked and served with this spicy sauce and served with mantau buns on the side to make sure that not one drop of the sauce goes to waste. Okay guys, time to get prepared here. We got a bib, this is critical. And we got our gloves. It's about to get messy. And we have our little tools here. We got the cracker for the shells and we got to dig out the crab. Ooh, it does smell incredible. I do want to know is how big is was the goddamn crab when this is the size of its claw? This is monster. I feel like this video is just an expose me of like, do you not know how to eat crab? No, this is my thing. I like playing along. We're here. I I, I like that this is tradition and we're gonna do it. But normally I'm a person that doesn't want to work for my food. Mm. Oh, okay, that was a nice crack. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm very close. Okay, I got some meat here. There we go. Okay, god damn it. Fuck, it's hot. Shit. Mmm, that crab is really sweet. It's really good. And like tastes so good with that like nice spicy sauce. Ooh, very frustrated. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna say this. I think it tastes delicious. I am completely over fighting to get morsels of fucking goddamn crab into my mouth. It's one of the most frustrating eating experiences of my entire life. Why serve me something that tastes so goddamn good just to tease me that I can't even eat? <laughs> over it. Yeah, I was a little frustrated trying to eat this, but I was more than happy just soaking it all mm. up with those buns. And then for dessert, banana gula malaka, which are flambéed in front of us and served with a coconut ice cream. Mmm, blue sweet banana, nice little bitter riches in there too. Burnt Ends is the Michelin star world's 50 best Aussie inspired barbecue restaurant right in Singapore that just absolutely blew me away with every bite. Flavor, preparation, technique, aromas, textures were all incredible. Here are some of the standout dishes from the tasting menu I had for lunch. Smoked pale egg and caviar. So they say that they soft boil it for what, like 30 seconds? And then they smoke it for like three or four hours. It's just crazy. I feel like I've never had that preparation on eggs before. And to do it on an egg is so small, I feel like it's hard to get perfect. And that was like perfectly cooked also. Perfectly balanced. The nice little yolk coming through with that fat. A little tiny pop of salt and a caviar. And yeah, they are more the aroma is sort of smoky than anything. Mmm. Grissini and terra masalata. Just like the smell coming off of it is so amazing. It smells like fresh and lemony and herby. Mm. Oh, it's such a delicate bite. Love the little lemon zest on there. Again, sort of like salty pop and caviar. Nice air fat and just a crunch. Oh. It's just melt. Lobster tartare and a potato pancake with caviar. The potato had this like really crunchy, creamy bite with the saltiness, nice sweetness from that lobster tartare, and then the bite saltiness of that caviar on top, just like this luscious, unbelievable bite. Oh my god. Crispy pig ear and sitar. Mmm. But the tart seasoning is fantastic. Super, super crunchy. The fat is just like bursting into your mouth. And it's very rich and salty. Mmm. Chicken neck. All right, so this is the chicken neck. It's supposed to have a scallion on it, but I dropped it, so we'll just eat it as it is. Oh, very patty. Nice char on there. Tempura eggplant with a caramelized miso. Ooh, it smells so good. Everything is so aromatic. It smells so good, like not shocking, but oh my God. It's so crunchy. It's so creamy. It's more like the heat from those, from those red peppers, but the caramelization of the miso, you almost don't taste it. It almost, it more like wafts into your nose and then makes that flavor. A homemade sourdough is topped with aioli and a 14 hour braised wagyu brisket and their own pickles on top of that. Oh, the brisket's like candy. Oh my God. It's this beautiful sweetness. 
with those layers of fat. I don't want to swallow. I want to savor this bite forever. Pork belly with this pineapple slaw. It is so juicy. It's a little bit of char on the outside, very salty, and then balanced so well with a little acidity and sweetness in those veggies too. Probably don't want to skip dessert either. A berry tart and donut. All right, I didn't think I'd have room for any bites, but now these desserts came out. I got, I got to at least taste them. Really soft, really buttery, nice tartness coming through. The coldness of the ice cream, contrasting the hotness from that fresh donut is so good. Lemony nose coming through, really, really buttery. All right, smoked marshmallow here. Oh, mmm. That beautiful caramelization has that nice smoky bitterness, contrasting with the sweetness of the marshmallow. The care and work and time put into every single bite is absolutely insane. Even just the space was so beautiful with a big open kitchen, cocktail bar next door. And don't forget to stop in their bakery next door on your way out because you need more sweet treats oh, and probably get a loaf of sourdough too. A restaurant well worth its acclaim. There are hawker centers all over Singapore, each one with endless stalls of amazing street food all under one roof. Not only is it experiencing food the way locals eat, but it's a great way to get a taste of so many of Singaporean specialties. It can definitely be overwhelming, but per usual, when I go to markets, I let my eyes and my nose guide me. First one I visited was Newton Food Center, which features 83 stalls. Here's what I got to try. Char Kway Tiao, uh, which are stir-fried noodles with garlic, dark soy sauce, chili paste, and lots of veggies and proteins. Mmm, super chewy, really rich. A little sweetness in there, a little heat in there. Mmm, these are my favorite kind of noodles. Hoki and prawn mi are egg noodles with vermicelli that are cooked in a broth with shrimp heads and pork bones that's been cooked down for hours. Prawn, squid, pork belly, and egg is added to that, along with a heaping of chili paste to mix in. I put too much of the chili in there. That's why we have beer. That is fucking hot. Chicken and beef satay. Mmm, I love that, that peanut sauce. Chicken wings. Mmm. Barbecue stingray with some ball paste on it. All right, stingray. It's so fatty. Carrot cake isn't what you think. Chow toy kueh is super savory and made with a mix of rice flour, eggs, radish, and garlic. You can get black or white, black bean fried with a sweet dark soy sauce. Ooh. It almost tastes like matzo brai. It's a very specific thing. Mmm. Yes, it tastes like Passover. So the black and the white versions. It's very eggy. There's some veggies in there. In oyster omelet. Oh, hot. Mmm. Really salty, crunchy, and then an oyster bursting through. We also went to Maxwell Food Center. Okay, so I think we, before we even get to the food, let's get a drink because it is hot and steamy out here. What do you say this was? Water chestnut drink. It is still, like all drinks here, they don't actually make them cold. It is warm at the bottom and they just put ice on top of it. So maybe give it a little stir and ice. Warm at the bottom. Yeah. The ice will melt very quickly also, but ugh, no, no, that this, is so sweet. This one's, this <laughs> no, one's, thank this you. one's it's better. <laughs> I, I don't that is too sweet for me. This one's just like a nice lime drink. Ooh, this one's cold too. It's, yeah. This feels like they made it cold. This is They did their job on this one. Now this I like. We got chicken rice. That came with a little soup. I question boiling hot soup in 90 degree weather of humidity, but you know what? Uh, do as the Singaporeans do, I feel like, so whatever. I mean, it is steaming hot. Jesus Christ, it's too hot to even hold, but we'll say so. Look at that, it is really flavorful. It's really good, yeah. yeah. It is temperature hot, but it tastes great. Mm. And we got two kinds of chickens with it, the traditional high knees poached and one roasted with soy sauce. That rice is cooked with the chicken broth uh, that has ginger and garlic added too. We also added some char soy pork with it too. All right, so I made myself a little composed plate here. Chickens cooked. Fantastic. The chicken is really nice and juicy. Got that pork. That pork is nice and sweet. And this is the roasted chicken. I actually think I like the boiled chicken better. I think it's cooked better. And I think that with the sauces, you could add your own experience too, which I really appreciate. Pork soup dumplings. It's steaming here. So I'm gonna bite the top off and let it cool down. All right, now what I like is you get two different experiences with every soup dumpling. Mmm. Really good. And these butterfly fritters that are fried dough sticks. 
Oh, it smells incredible. Oh my God. Mmm. It's just a little crunchy, really light bite. Subtle sweetness, really buttery. Nice nuttiness in there too. Mmm. I like the simplicity. If you want to go duck sauce out a little bit. Mmm. That almost brings out the nuttiness a little bit more with the duck sauce. I think this is my experience when I go eating around the world and then go to these markets like this. I don't think what you're gonna taste is going to be like, oh my God, this is the greatest chicken satay I've ever had in my entire life. But what I love about eating and what I love about traveling is the experiences that you get. And the experience here is so awesome. It's like, what's nice too, it's, it's a food market that's full of like locals and tourists. Like this is legitimately where Singaporean people eat. And you're just getting like homey food cooked from people that have been cooking here for God knows how long. So it's like a true experience that I appreciate so much more than what that bite would be. All right, number one tip though, make sure you bring your own napkins wipes. Not only will you need them for your hands, but you use them to reserve tables. When you see one on a table, you know someone is sitting there just off looking for more food. From Hawker Stall to First Hawker Water Mission Star to now locations all over the world, Hawker Chan is a must for their soy sauce chicken. The chicken is marinated, roasted, and chopped and served with either rice or what I got, the noodles. Hell yeah. The noodles are really chewy. It has a nice bite to it. The sauce is rich, tiny little bit of sweetness. Mmm, looks a good chew. Let's get this beautiful chicken there. Super, super juicy, really, really flavorful. A great combo. A New York City fave coat has a beautiful new location in Singapore. They brought with them their world-renowned Korean barbecue that they're known for, along with their incredible service. But they have some specialties just for Singapore too. Here's what to order. Started with a beer, and then with the meal we ordered, uh, which we'll get to in a second, you start with the gogi cha, which is beef bone consomme. The oyster omelet are pan-fried cream oysters with a citrus yuju vinaigrette. Oh my God, this bite was insane. Their quote unquote steak and eggs are a hand cut filet mignon tartare with the Kaluga hybrid caviar all on milk toast. The best. Then we got the butcher's beast to share with all the banchan, of course. It also comes a spicy kimchi stew and an egg souffle. But of course it's the meat, which is the star, which are all cooked perfectly in front of you. So you get four cuts. Australian black Angus hanger steak, 45 day dry aged USDA prime ribeye, Australian wagyu flat iron, galbi, which is marinated short rib. Yeah. And we added the Japanese A5 wagyu too. This even more spicy samjang is only available in Singapore for now. It's very spicy. And then the Korean beef bakute is also only served in Singapore. It's a prime beef short rib cut off the bone table side and serves with white pepper and vermicelli noodles and some bird's eye chili dark soy sauce to add in. Of course, dessert, this fruit platter and their vanilla soft serve with the soy sauce caramel. The space is just super, super cool too. They even have a bunch of secret lounges that I need to come back and try. One of the more famous drinks in Singapore is the Singapore Sling, made famous at the Long Bar at the Raffles Hotel. And one of my favorite things about the bar is that you get free peanuts and are told to just toss those shells right on the floor. When I was little, I used to eat the peanut shell. I don't think that's good though. Don't do that, I'm an idiot. It's a mix of gin, cherry liqueur, contro, benedictine, pineapple juice, lime juice, grenadine, and bitters. Mmm. What I like is like, I thought it'd be like maybe too sweet. It's actually really bitter which is nice and just like really fresh, little bitter, little tiny sweetness in there. Mmm. This is a drink that's like, it's very easy to drink. Too easy to drink, that's the, that's the problem. <laughs> and if you're looking for somewhere else to drink, Atlas was one of the most beautiful bars I've ever seen and great cocktails too. For over two decades, 328 Katang Laksa has had some of the best laksa in Singapore. It's been awarded in Mission Bib Grama, and even Anthony Bourdain went there. It's not as humid today, which is really nice, but it's still steaming hot. So we're gonna start off with some fresh lime juice here. That is 
tart and that little bitterness, but very refreshing. I wish I had more ice. I don't know if there's an ice in there, just cold. But the heat it is out here, it's gonna get warm in two seconds. I need ice. You can get their Katang Laksa, small or large, and it's a pranic and spicy noodle soup made with coconut milk, dried shrimp, sambal chili paste, secrets, more shrimp, and rice noodles. And on the side to mix in, it comes with ota, spicy fish paste, in on an egg, and a ring roll made from bead curd skin. Mmm, the aroma coming off of this is incredible. It's very coconutty, you're getting the spices, seafood coming through too, a little bit of freshness. Mmm. Ooh, that chili heat hits you right away. It's more like the aromatics of the coconut coming through more than the flavor. It's spice, tasting the shrimp. Mmm, that's fantastic. So we dip this into it too, soaking up all that liquid. Very light bite. All right, so this is the fish chili paste. We're gonna add a little bit to it. Definitely a little more heat. Mmm, the flavors and aromatics in this are just really, really great. I also got some nasi lamak, uh, which is rice soaked in coconut milk, wrapped in banana leaf, anchovies, sambal, and peanuts. The sauce is like dark, rich, little sweet, but also brings that chili heat. Whoa. Yeah. All right, then we have a shrimp cake to taste. Mmm, very sweet. What I like is I was expecting it to be more like super ground up shrimp, but you're really getting shrimp texture in there, which is nice. Necessary with the heat and the spice. Looking for a fun night out in Singapore? Death start at this hidden, stunning, super fun restaurant synthesis. Here's what to order. I mean, just look at this bar. So start with drinks, obviously. The Mongolian fried cauliflower was first and definitely my favorite bite of the night. Oysters with sesame oil, soy sauce, rice wine, garlic chips, ginger, and basil infused goma oil. Ikura papadam uh, with the curry aioli. Collagen herbal poached rice uh, is chicken with a six combination soup, egg floss, and puffed rice. It's very warm and comforting. Dongbei lamb chop. Suan ponzi truffle carbonara is actually made with yam. And then that comes with crispy burdock root and wild mushrooms. Slow cooked Atlantic salmon with a curry soy emulsion and sunflower seeds pesto. And from there, continue the night, they also own two hidden bars a few minutes away. First is Mama Diem. Then upstairs from that, even more secret, is Lu Shang, uh, which is also a coffee shop during the day. I didn't really know what to expect going to Singapore. I knew about the hawker centers, but I didn't quite realize just how much of a melting pot of all of Asia Singapore was. You see that in all of its food and truly what makes it so special. It's also really interesting being in a place so controlled by the government where you see the positives and negatives of that. It's a stunningly beautiful city with all new buildings needing to have greenery, and it's also a place where you can't chew gum, where the government controls who could buy housing. Even the 100 plus hawker centers were a big government initiative to get them off the streets and regulated. But in such a short time, the city has grown tremendously and it's still growing in all ways with so many exciting things happening. It's great to see them holding on to tradition but moving things forward at the same time. But be prepared for the weather. It was hot and humid with rain basically every afternoon. So let me know what Singapore spots I missed in the comments below. And if you made it this far, a sub would be great because I go to food adventures all over the world. And here are a few more restaurants I think you'd love.